In this video, I'm going to show you how to install and do a basic setup of the Astaro Security Gateway. To start, we will need to download a copy of the ISO and burn it to a disk. So I will open up Internet Explorer and the, go to download.astaro.com. From here, we can pick the Astaro Security Gateway link. Open up the latest version, version 8, and we go to the software appliance, ISO, and we can download the latest ASGV8 software.iso file. Click on save. We're going to save this to our desktop, and we wait until it finishes its download. Once it has finished downloading, we can see that it's showing right here on our desktop and we can just simply right click on it and burn it to disk. So once we have the ISO burnt on a disk, we can start the installation on a system. Keep in mind that installing a star on your machine will wipe the drives. So I suggest you use a spare computer or you can also run it in a virtual environment, which is what I am doing in this demo. So let me start up the virtual machine at full screen. And this is the first screen you'll see once booting the uh, CD. We're going to press enter on this and it's going to start up the installation process. Now the whole installer is text-based and it's actually pretty simple to follow through. Uh, just by reading the bottom bar you can look at the prompts or actions you can take during the course of the install. So we're going to press on enter here to do start. It's going to detect all the CPUs and all the hardware of the machine. And just click OK to this. We're going to go in English. And we're in Central Time. US Central. And it's going to show up the time. Now in this case, the host time is going to be UTC, Universal Time Clock. And just press Next. I'm going to pick one of the two interfaces, uh, or many that you may have on your machine. Uh, this interface will be the primary interface or the local interface for configuring the Astaro. So I'm going to pick the first one, ETH0. Press next on that. And I'm going to give it an IP address. Uh, in this case, I'm going to pick 192.168.157.254. So I'm going to mask off 255.255.255.0. And no gateway. It's optional. And uh, it's actually, if you're on the inside network, y you wouldn't specify a gateway here. So we're pretty much set for the IP address configuration. I'm going to click Next. Now it's prompting me if I want to install a 64 bit kernel. If your machine is relatively new and has like a um, Pentium D or a Core 2 Duo CPU or anything higher than that, most likely it has 64 bit support. Um, one of the advantages of having 64-bit support is to address memory blocks larger than 4 gigabytes. Not that you'll ever need more than 4 gigs on an Astaro, but I can still do that. And it improves performance just a little bit. So we're going to press on Yes to install the 64-bit kernel. And now this is a um, just a confirmation that you're willing to install closed source components on the system. We have to press Yes on the screen, otherwise the installation will just cancel itself. And now it's basically prompting us the uh, first time if we want to wipe the drives. Press yes. And it's going to format the partitions. And it's going to install the Star Security Gateway right after this. So we'll let the installation go through. And we can just press reboot at the end of the installation. It's going to give us a confirmation that the URL for configuration is going to be HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash 192.168.157.254 colon 4444. Press reboot. And the virtual machine will restart. And this is what we will see as the Astara boots up. So once the Astaro software is installed, we can just plug in our computer to the ETH0 interface, which is the interface we specified during setup to, to be the admin interface of the Astaro. And we need to set up a static IP on the system because by default, Astaro does not act as a DHCP server. 
So we set up a static IP in the range of the admin subnet. And in this case is 192.168.157.1 is the IP address of my system. And then we open up a web browser and navigate to the address that we were given at the end of setup. So it's going to be in this case 192.168.157.254 colon 4444. And it's going to be over SSL. So the S in HTTPS is important. Just going to navigate to the IP address. You're going to get a continue to this website prompt uh, because it's using a self-signed SSL certificate that the computer does not trust necessarily. So I'm going to click on continue. And we're presented with a basic system setup. I'm going to type in a star as the host name. Acuity is the company name. Pick a country. I'm just going to type in password. For the password, obviously, you don't want that in a production system. And my email address. We accept the license agreement and perform the basic setup. Now it's going to say it's going to take about 40 seconds, but usually it's a little bit quicker than that. We can either wait the 40 seconds or just force a refresh. We're going to continue to this website again. And we will be presented with the admin interface. So we log in. And the first thing we're going to see is a wizard. Most of the time, you would not want to follow the wizard if you're doing a brand new installation, just because it creates objects that we really don't need. And it limits the outbound connectivity of the Astaro. So we're going to go ahead and cancel the wizard and do it the expert way, I would call it. Uh, I noticed that the graphs look a little off. Okay, they corrected themselves. And now this is the dashboard of the Star Security Gateway V8. We notice that ETH0 is our internal interface. Its state is up. The link is up. We have all the subscriptions up and running. Uh, initially, the first time you install Astaro, it's going to install a demo license key. Now, for home users, Astaro provides a home user license key that limits you to 50 IPs, um, but enables all the functionality on the Astaro uh, that would be HTTPS proxying, FTP, antivirus filtering, spam filtering, and the new features like web application security and wireless security for managed access points. So the first thing we're going to do is we will configure our external interface. In this case, it's going to be ETH1 to be our default gateway on the router. So we're going to go to Interfaces and Routing, and then Interfaces. We're going to add a new interface. We're going to call this External. And in the demo, this interface is connected to a local network and it can pull DHCP. Now it all depends on your configuration. You might have a static IP to set up here. You might have a DSL modem that runs PPPoE, or you might have a something that runs DHCP too, like a Comcast modem or something like that. Uh, so we're gonna pick ETH1 as the hardware and we're gonna leave IPv4 default gateway enabled. We're gonna click on save and by default, any additions that you make to the configuration of the Astaro, they're gonna be off just to make sure you don't make any conflicting changes and all of a sudden you get kicked off the firewall. So we're going to enable this external interface. I'm going to click on interfaces just to see if it ever switches to up. And sometimes it takes a little bit. And after it switches back to up, it should pull in a, an IP address from the local subnet. In this case it did, at 149. Now, uh, we have to decide if we want the Astaro to act is our DHCP and DNS server for the internal network. If the Astaro is replacing a home router, most likely there are no other DHCP or DNS servers, and we don't want, we do want these roles to be assumed by the Astaro. Uh, we'll set up a DHCP server first on the internal interface. So we go to Network Services and DHCP. Now there's no DHCP servers defined. We're going to click on New. We're going to pick the internal interface. Now by default, it's going to fill in uh, the biggest range possible. We're going to limit this to 100 to 199 and it's also going to fill in its own IP address, the Astaro's IP address, for the DNS server and the default gateway. We can put in a uh, FQDN or full qualified domain name in here if we want 
a DNS suffix. In this case, I'm just going to leave it blank. I'm going to click on Save. In this case, it showed up as on, and the internal interface now has a DHCP server that's being DSDAO. Now the next step would be to set up DNS servers, otherwise we won't be able to get out and resolve DNS names. So we go into DNS section here in Network Services, and we see that the allowed networks is internal. Basically what this means is internal uh, IP addresses within the internal network will be able to resolve names using Astaro's DNS resolver. One important part to take a look at is the forwarder section. If your ISP is sending you DNS servers via DHCP or a PPP connection, this will be populated with the servers that your ISP uses. In this case, the network that I'm connected to is internal, so I'm having internal DNS servers show up in here. In case we wanted to add something like an open DNS uh, provider, or we wanted to add Google's DNS server, or anything like that, we would click on the Create New Definition here. Uh, the type of it would be Host, and we can call it um, 4222 is the most common server that I use. Um, save it. We can also add, let's say, open DNS. Uh, create an IP address of 208.67.222.222. And we can apply the changes. Now, all of the computers on the inside network will pick up the HTTP from the Astaro. And based on the DHCP definition, the DNS server is the Astaro itself, which then going to the DNS setting, the internal network is allowed, and the Astaro will forward all DNS requests to the forwarders defined and also to the forwarders assigned by the ISP automatically. Now, even after setting up DHCP and DNS, we will not be able to be out on the internet because the Astaro security gateway is a firewall that has an Im what's called an implicit deny rule. By default, it will deny all traffic that is not specified to be allowed. So what we have to do is two things. One, we have to specify what's called a masquerading rule, which will basically act as a port network address translation, or a PAT. Um, and this will let us share our IP address that were assigned by the ISP within multiple computers on the inside network. So we're going to create a new masquerading rule. We click on the folder. So we can do, and this is one of the nice things about the Astaro interface, is all drag and drop. So we can just drag and drop any interfaces that we want in here. So what we want to do is masquerade any IPs on the internal network. We drag internal network in there. To go out on the external interface using the primary address, and we click on Save. We turn on the rule, and what this rule basically does is any IP addresses that are on the inside network and that are going to the external network, basically my computer is accessing the internet, it will follow this path. Um, the Astaro will track the connection as a port address translation connection and will keep track of all the traffic. So basically this allows us to share a single IP address among multiple computers. And the second step we have to do in order for the Astaro firewall to act as a replacement router for a, a simple Linksys or Netgear or anything that you have at home is to create a packet filter rule that lets traffic out. Because right now we specified that we want to share our IP address using the masquerading rule, but we need to specify a rule that lets any traffic from the internal network using any service, service means port, uh, to any destination. Let's put up the uh, IPv4. We want to allow this traffic. We don't necessarily want to log it because that's, be, that's going to be everything. We save the rule and we enable it. We can close this networks pane right here. And we can go back to the dashboard just to see if we're passing any traffic in and out. And it looks like we are. Uh, so this concludes the initial setup of the Astaro. At this point, the Astaro security gateway with just one outbound rule, the masquerading, DHCP, and DNS setup should act as a regular home router.